afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane. We are off here to another Monday novice fight. That's what the MNF means in the top. Apparently, some people need it spelled out, which apparently also really means they need to watch this. We're off here, one versus one on the Stalingrad map. Yes, indeed, this rather generic <laughs> urban ruins map. We shall be watching. Uh, 19 Mila, 1942. Uh, just call him Mila, that's really a ridiculous name. Hard to print. So to get right, anyways. Funny here for Germany, for the Reich. For the Kampfgruppe Müller. Going against Mate Man G74. Funny here for the Soviet Union and the 125th Rifle Corps. With hit the dirt guard rifle, and in fact he's going for the guard rifle company. No other commanders are sort of visual. Nice, and we see him immediately just as we look over here. We are seeing that Mila here chooses scavenge. Scavenge. When Fosco's going out there, he could consider second stream pioneer unit. Though surprisingly he's not making any units really, which there we go, second stream pioneer on this map. Not a bad idea. Kantuk's popping out here for Mate Man, who's setting up some bar wire here of all the places. Quickly, Yuri, lay down some barbed wire here. W why? Because I say so. Instead of, you know, taking territory, we should be wearing this really pointless piece of terrain. And it's hardly going to stop the enemy from taking the point whatsoever. It's not really like it's going to achieve much. There goes Sandbags up. Not a bad idea, though. Not a bad idea. We'll place there. Also noting that... Mila is actually being as troops. He's also not even connecting his territory very well. He's just sort of milling about there a bit and aimlessly already here in the beginning, which is generally not what you want to be aiming for as the Germans anything. But you want to sort of have some kind of focus up, some area you want to sort of specifically control and then sort of take it from there. Instead, we are in fact seeing he's sort of splitting up their troops, taking losses. Getting out to a building here. Molotovs are already available. And there we go, looks like he's all being forced away there. Quick retreat. And already there, a lot of effort essentially wasted right there by Mila within the first few minutes already. Again, you know, make sure there's a bit of, you know, a plan there when you're in terms of connecting territory. There's sort of, again, a bit of a focus in particular as the Germans. You don't want territory hanging about there being disconnected for quite some time. Particularly also since you can take taking the munitions but it would also have been disconnected for some time and might have been taken back here though in this case it never quite became German in the first place also knowing that it's a problem company after the first three conscripts and the Molotov Doom has been up the road here he needs to get out of there his conscripts are not in the two corner condition also called out in the open and there we go he judges correctly in this case and pulls out before senseless is losing men here good reaction there good reaction and again, this is the Monday Novice fight, so don't expect brilliant play. Quite the opposite. This is each those who are less good to point out mistakes, so that others may also not make them. And hopefully get a bit better. Again, you know, a lot of the things tend to be repeats. You're not, you know, use bloody cover. And, you know, pull your men back in time and spend your resources. Tends to be rather common ones. Right here, this jump on is need to get away there. Low and help, low and help, low and help. Screw. That was really close there, really close there. Now, of course, he charges straight into a unit there with a lot of assault rifles. Of course, he does a lot of conscript. At the same time, though, the jump on have a chance of doing some damage while the folks are talking about support. But let's see how this actually works out. In this case, though, in the end, was overwhelmed. Conscript sit had a bit of luck there. Though they were rather heavily beaten here, the Fulcrum of course, sadly not achieving much despite their opponents being preoccupied with another target and largely out in the open. There you go, quick rough for what the fault's gonna do is. Pulling away there. Quick vault over. Further losses. Also, I think Battle Group Headquarters up. Barely any units in the field, he's already going for that one. Oh, there you go, second Fulcrum squad. squad. Grenade failed to hit. No, he was trying to throw the unit already out in the open. A small tick there. Generally, you sort of want to wait until they're sort of close to some cover part because that way you're sort of more idea where they're going to be and also can move towards because most units, but have a unit cover, try to shift further along the cover rather than outwards. And that's also a slight, slight chance to hitting something there, though, usually. I'm mean, not saying it's going to be happening always, but, you know, it's better than, say, for example, throwing out here where there's also a lot more easy room to maneuver in. Punches need to fall back. Maximuming up. 
troops reinforcing, healing, good, good. Maxim here, not really good position, I mean, essentially the terrain will much more easily allow it to be outmaneuvered, and he should keep moving. A bit too slow there, if anything. Much too slow. Getting his entire unit suppressed there. Now need to suppress before, or retreat actually, before the entire unit gets wiped out or at least heavily crippled, and thus essentially ends up wasting a lot of manpower. Come on, Mila. Makes the effort. Hopes are enforcing Storm Pioneers moving up. Why is the other Storm Pioneer unit not moving as well? Also, nothing here to guard. No mines, no nothing. In that regard, Mila is also displaying already some not so grand map control. Mines going up, that is good. Good to see some mining there. Mortar following up. Storm Pioneers not doing much. Charging up the center here. Mike, sort of. Holt and there you go, Jaeger Infantry has arrived. Engaging the country for the building, good job. The Kanskers will not have much of a chance versus these highly trained German infantrymen with the KBF 43s. And probably not when they're in heavy cover. There you go, recently well to pull back the mortar up at the front line. Storm Pioneers moving to in. Close in, close in, Max Schnell. Bit too slow there, a bit too slow. At the same time, the mortar crews are probably supposed to also get the devil out of there, but certainly I think we would have had him in a bit faster there on his feet. Mines were up there, cleared out the mine panel. That was not cancelled. I mean, generally, if you don't get to finish a mine, you're better off cancelling it. Another supply after they're arriving for Mila. Made man sneaking about still more. Could calling guards infantry if you want it. Slight advance here from Amila towards the center. You should also now access to the infiltration grenades. Assault. And there you go, just coming in a bit aggressive here from the Russians. Men being lost. Storm Pioneers, please stand about flanking in from there. But again, there's an awful lot of, you know, nothing really happening with a lot of Mila's units. Which is, you know, something you want to watch. Also, for example, this Jaegerlad infantry units. Oh, finally moving. By the way, one of you actually booby trapped at that point, that would be good for him. Make it harder for his opponent, made man to actually harass it. Mortify going in there, still needs to fall back. And there you go, the only actually flanking about. Good is our bite, Leute. Closing in there, solidly, unit heavily damaged. And there we go, much too slow to look our flanks, consider anything there. In this case, Mila was able to exploit that quite solidly. It looks like he won't be able to get the mortar. At the same time, Maximil with some comments laying down mines again. I mean, right here, main man. I mean, he's laying down mines, which is great, but he has a very nasty knack for doing it right in front of his opponent, which generally ruins the entire point of it. I mean, mines are like surprise parties. You don't want the intended reci recipient to know about it until it's, you know, happening. Before that, you know, it kind of ruins the surprise, of course, the difference between the two are surprise parties aren't supposed to blow somebody up, but, you know, otherwise, largely the principle is the same. Don't let the other bastard find out before it's too late. And rather, that's a bit the problem here for Mate Man already. It's not quite working out. We do see some submachine guns up, but, you know, choose your engagement correctly here. Again, you know, consider the strength of your unit. In this case, this is a four-man country squad. Now it's down to one man, but of course, for submachine gun slow health versus four-man storm pioneer unit with assault drivers. That really shouldn't have gone well for him, yet he's still closed in. I mean, you know, know when to fight, know when to pull back. And right here, he's lost another infantry squad already here in a very short succession. I mean, Mate Man here is actually making an awful lot of not very solid mistakes. Could the least consider placing maybe some of the guards infantry and maybe some DPs. Come on, a mush. Quickly, to Dimitri. Quickly. Sharp Hunts headquarters going up there. Pretty standard approach there. From Battle Group headquarters to a Sharp Hunts headquarters. Common stuff, common stuff. Plenty of munitions for him. Still no sound of a booby trap, though. You're standing out here again, remember. Cover is in most cases directional. Creatures less so. The Jimmy wants to use. There we go. He's making a bit of a mistake. He's charging straight in to sort of in a position here, out in with a very large open space here. 
Very poorly executed assault there. Very poorly executed assault there. He really should have known that. And there you go. Quick assault here. Versus all these clammed up units. Not bad. Not bad. Done a lot of damage. But the false guys need to go away. They're still point blank here with a lot of consequence for the PPH 41s. Sean Pine is moving 40 against him moving in. Jaeger Infantry, of course, being a more separate divisional type. Uh, not really regulated equipment available for the Fleas, I believe, according to one sort of table of organization I've read. It was actually more MP40s and the likes of I think they were actually more equipped like a regular Grenadier squad. It was more basically the amount of heavy weapons they had and the sort of terrain they were meant to fight in to sort of determine the Jaeger. Not nothing secured. Troops advancing. It's very little infantry here for him. Taking up to get some armor. That's not a bad aim, particularly because we are noting here that another slight issue has arisen here for Mila. That is, he's got absolutely no anti tank weapons, which is really not something you want at all. No Akedon Alpha, no Panzer Strike, no nothing. That really leaves him very vulnerable. So and even one panther trick would have had time covering it all. More contracts on the way. These gentlemen finally need to get back and also looks like he has not recruited his mod here, his Gunnar from the Focus moving up here, a quick assault maybe could clear it out. Then again he We have more conscripts at our disposal. No, nope, he's moving out in the open. In fact he probably could have moved down here and then sort of snug up here and then might fragged it. That's another discussion going here through point again. Good job, they're acting a bit of harassment. And all the soldiers arrive here for Mila. And there you go, assault going in. They're already when they are suppressed. So roll the maximum, but he just did to shift away from it, avoiding the worst of it. And so you know, fire back again. Larger force moving to the centre. Not really a lot of action. And not a lot of mines either from him. And again, no booby traps. No booby traps. Right over here to Mila. Force size wise, they're largely the same. They're obviously a lot more interesting here for Mila. No attempt at securing the mortar. I mean, he could do with a bit of light artillery that way. I mean, he could also salvage it, but a part of me would say, you know, it's never hurt you, you know, to get a bit of light artillery in the form of a mortar. Of course, here coming under fire, so a bit too late. He could just steer it or fight for it, at least, you know. What he's doing here, of course, is not paying attention to what is going on and just continuing to salvage it, which is a really risky moment. I mean, you know. If it was closer to completion, I'd say go for it, because, you know, there's a challenge you might succeed, but at the same time, he'd practically just begun the units of closing in, so right here, poorly. I mean, he's in retreat, you know, realising, you know, he buggered up, that's good, but, you know, and then he proceeds to fail to retreat the other unit. So a lot of issues there in terms of unit preservation, unit, unit usage, and sort of tactical sense. And right here, his opponent was able to then regain the mortar to once more throw high explosives at the fascist foe. So that was a bit unfortunate there. Storm Pine is moving up close, engaging here the counter- Oh! About to lose another unit. That looks it. But looks like thanks to the fact he hit the dirt there, while well, the Sersenist allowing to survive this, on the other hand also let this just escape and survive as well. But yeah, again from Sersenist reinforcing. With a fresh folks gonna do unit arriving, Pantrix on the way for them. The Kenref as well. The Kenref then get a bit tricky sort of use on this map. Still no sign at the booby trap. A very underestimated underusability I feel. Can do a lot to make things one place per and there we go, a T thirty five seventy six arrives here for maintenance, so armor has arrived on the field. Do see his opponent does have some Pantrix, but again, at the same time, on this map, they can be a bit trickier to use. So he's going to have to sort of pull it off correctly, in particular, the Kedden Mare first going to be a bit at a slight disadvantage here. Yeah. Getting caught here by front, but do see the officer down here flanking in. Good job. At the same time, a small assault going up here, but getting caught by an awful lot of Germans and the Sphera Pantrix. Caught in the Eagle Council, swiped out. Too slow to retreat there. Too slow to retreat. That could have been done a bit better. Orbs on the down to two men, T-34 doing damage, and he's actually still trying to take the point, he should retreat, retreat! Zurückfallen! No point in wasting them. Under 
Going here for the fuel point again. This time, no reaction force to deal with that. And he's actually ending like Kenmeth on its own. Not a good idea, very much. Keep in mind, like Kenmeth has no gun shield, it's actually meaning the crew is very much more exposed than on any other anti tank gun. In this case, the T 34 does take a lockdown, says the support joins in with their Panzer Strike. And a good thing to get here, but the consequences for the PPH 41 troops will make short work here of the folks gun. This like of course, won't be doing much for that fight. Still Manx is a secure centre position I suppose, so he's giving up the flanks and the field on them. Ooh, but there he goes, jump on his main to get a good blow. And managed to avoid most of the actual Molotov fire, impressively enough. Some time away from getting a Panther, he needs to regain that fuel point. He wants to sort of get towards it in a reasonable pace. Shunpan is making the forward assault. They're coming in front of the T-34. Need to fall back. Need to fall back. Unit preservation. Unit preservation. There we go. But too late. We've lost a squad of infantry. And the Jaeger infantry on the right flank getting caught here by the Maxim. And calling in an Austin flak panzer. Not necessarily what I recommend in the current situation. Considering he's already fighting him versus the T-34. He really should try and aim up for a panther, I feel. But there you go. Ostwind Flak Panzer Fear. One of three Flak Panzers based on the Panzer IV chassis. Overall, the Germans didn't really make many others that actually saw combat. There was one based on the Panzer I, and there's one based on the Panzer 38T, the Flak Panzer Dynaxis T Gepard, which had more or less the same gun as, say, the Flak Half Track, the 2 centimeter gun. There we go. Ostwind moving forwards. Opening up here on the maximum and hitting a mine. Good job there. Apparently, he managed to forget about that mine that made man lay down right in front of his eyes. Ospin was also one of the less produced flak panzers around. And of course, also the Wirbelwind with its flak feeling mount. Of course, we're here versus the conscripts. Again, some machine guns versus rifles and a panzer make not really good. T-34 moving in. Orbis I need to get into cover. Why is he standing about like that? Use cover into Dekong. And he lost the MG-34. Not really well handled there. Can't be doing that counter cover. Flak Panther needs to go away. At least they got some managed to repair the engine. Flak Panther taking a bit of a turn there. And Guardsman making off there with the MG-34. And the Fox is charging straight into it. Why can't he use cover? Or well, for that matter, the building, I mean, the orbital zone in the building would certainly been much harder for Maiden Man to deal with. Yeah, he seemed rather relaxed to to do that. And there we go, the Gaspin here with an MG-34 basically Terminators, just wiping out the entire Jaeger unit that remained. You know, Dimitri, this machine gun is pretty good. Shh, don't say that. It's made by the Germans. You'll be shot. Getting another orbital done unit. Flak Panzer are going to need some repairs. A roll. I mean, we are seeing that Mina here is displaying a not very strong sense of unit preservation, or for that matter, usage of cover or buildings. I mean, good use of buildings can in this game also make quite a difference. Even for something as simple as reconnaissance purposes. They go, Panzer moving up here, salting. He seems to be a bit forgetful about the range here of the Schwerer Panzer headquarters. It's mighty 30 centimeter flak cannon. Bit slow in actually getting to repair that flak panzer. Which, by the way, both of them had the exact same gun. Fun fact. Also, a little fun fact about this particular 30 centimeter flak. There's actually a variant of it that had two guns on it a flak spilling. Mounted gun. Put some belts. So that's a little fun fact there. The Chief Head coming in five from the Kenmare for battery two and the Panzerik Fox gun it is. Now it's a bit of work there. Nope, it's already battery two and another tank has ramped so already here. Mila's strategy and tactics are beginning to really hurt him. He's losing out on men and his tanks are beginning to get more and more dominant. Looks like he's finally making a move there. Oh, quick shooting up here. The quick assault there. Well executed. Clears out a lot of the occupants. All of a sudden moving in. Striking on going in there from the Soviet Air Force. And there you go. 
Jovanovic just tears into the orbital line and the attended Fultz Grenadiers. There you go, flat pan to the right, get it moving, get it moving. A lot of fire going in there against the Sturmek from 230mm guns. Looks like we'll make it. Oh, no, a mine crashing straight into the ruins. No survivors. No survivors. But over again, the Alton learning students are getting more spread out. The support soldiers are getting more spread out. There's a bit here, but that's overall not really going to do much in the longer run. Also, one artillery strike here is available, 105mm. Time for the mid game analysis. Current situation is not really good here for our German friend. He's got a few more kills in his opponent. Damage wise, he's not looking that much stronger either. So overall, I mean, struggling a lot. He's lost a lot of men. He's taken quite a few losses. Matt wise control, he's not looking strong either. He's got a few points struggling to help with a few points. He's not really doing much to defend it either, though. Lots of munitions, but not a lot else. A few wise, he needs to sort of rebuild really up. He needs to get a Panther to sort of have a decent chance to versus all these T-34s here in the ruins. When he doesn't get that, he's pretty much going to be screwed pretty badly. So that's something he needs to work on. He needs to work on his Chanel, which means he needs to sort of put up a defense around here as well. He needs to sort of guard it properly. He also needs to begin using building to sort of, you know, set up some stronger positions. Particularly the Orbital Line can become quite helpful versus the enemy if placed in a building. Then they can become quite nasty and certainly should also consider laying down at least a booby trap point here around the few points and that way at least make it a bit more difficult for his opponent to secure it than it currently is. So that's something he also needs to get a bit more aggressive with his flak pans. I mean he's holding it back. He, I mean he spent a lot of fuel on it which pretty much prevented him getting a panther much sooner but he needs to sort of get it driving towards his opponent. He needs to do some damage. He needs to sort of try and draw up some manpower, slow down his opponent advance and basically ensure he doesn't get swarmed at one point because currently the way he's playing he very much risks getting absolutely flooded by his opponent. Mate man of course all here having a much larger force that's only going to grow as things pass on. And so he might soon get himself a third T-34. He could also basically save up for a howitzer and that way bombard his opponent. And that could also work out qu quite nicely overall, though. The threats to Mr. Mila are definitely many and should be worried about. Of course, that's really it. But for otherwise, we made man just need to play a bit sensibly, not waste units. Since in our you know, just slowly build up a force and then take on this position. A field gun here, for example, firing at the three hands across from a good range, and then having tank strike from the sides could probably deal with it rather solidly. Just striking up the T-34s up here, the orbital now that one Fox gun squad is not going to do much. I mean, on their own, they're not much of a threat to any armor, in particular, not on the open. So that is rather important to keep in mind. But back to the fight. Let us see how this goes. Can Mila stage a return? Paying these round at quarters, no technical for some, you know, protecting the victory point. That could have been nice. Over again, a lot of things not really happening. Too passive, which is also something you want to avoid. You know, having units standing about doing absolutely nothing, in particular something as expensive when you're the commander list as a Black Panther four. So we're going to have again low and helpful and health, and into the dark. This is in Stanley's got territory with a little clue of it going on, and there we go. Gas moving in, coming in the fire here from 230 million flax. Just heavy fire there, really tanked with the guardsmen. T-34 flanking in. And we've got perhaps the kid that needs to turn about. T-34 dodging some of the shots, but actually taking a lot of damage, a bit of damage. And there you go, the killer joining in. That's going to be bad. He, in fact, needs to get out of there right now. Ooh, veteran T3. And there we go, terrain not really good for maneuvering about, he should have tried and reverse move. Probably misclicked, and set the Kenwefer got a good shot, and he's actually kind of setting the Kenwefer there. So now he can put a bit more of a threat towards his opponent, lots of conscripts there, though they should probably just go for here, avoid this spot until they get something to deal with from a safer range. Once more the Flak Panzer has been pulled back, only one more kill, and still a lot of damage inflicted upon it. You know, Fritz, maybe we could have done better. 
Now you got a kid now for gives it a bit of a damage bonus there to its first strike out of camouflage. Not like that bad bonus as such. Another T-34 on the way. He could easily spread troops out of him in no point having two squads right next to each other in a point. That's practically begging for a good artillery strike or something like that. Though so far he's been rather lucky. His opponent has nothing like that. But still, I mean, he could easily take these both of these points at the same time. Points are ticking down. Nothing else much happening. Tanks being repaired, away from danger, that's good though. I think this might be taking a bit to the extreme. Polska is moving up. Flak Panzer, we got to deal with that, that's good, but now we're saving that, goes straight into the line of fire over the flak, that's a bit more tricky. Mar moving up here on its own. No anti-tank support except for an anti-tank grenades. Except he's not got the munitions for it. Quick to spread out our troops though this time. I mean, at least he's quick to retreat his orbital on his way instead of getting them wasted. Storm Pine needs to get into the building. Into the building. Don't run about in the open. Don't run about in the open. What are you doing, Mark Mila? Use cover into Deckung, and apparently they managed to secure the MU-34 from the Guards' infantry, but they grabbed it over to the Russians again. Come on. Cover, cover. I mean, even place that in the building, you'll probably have beaten his opponent easily. And that's just disgraceful. Enemy forces capturing supply sector. Definitely some things that he needs to improve on. Looks like the Soviet Air Force this time escapes without getting an aircraft shot down. Meanwhile, the Chief Force is ready to strike against the German infantry. Fortunately, suffering losses. And responding reasonably well in time this time around. Still a lot of units not really doing much. Apparently, another Sturm Pioneer unit to replace the one senselessly lost. Mila continues to struggle with having much of a map presence. We also now see the light infantry gun up, but as you might have noticed, it's not really in a well positioned spot there to really cover anything and provide any offensive support. So, you know, might want to move it up, say, for example, around here, would be able to cover around here, but also here. I mean, that would be a much better spot rather than here, where he's basically doing bugger all. I mean, that's just basically poor positioning of your artillery. If one has to be honest. Apparently now the Jäger infantry unit arrives. Stealth the infantry rating through the ruins and appearing. With style. And give for the freeze. And there we go. A howitzer going up. I mean, you know, not a bad idea though on this map. I can safely say he's placing it too close. I mean, when he can fire straight into your opponent out of the map. You know, you might have placed a bit too close. It should be more accurate around here, but at the same time, he also much more risks getting noisy knocked out. So, in this case, you know, I would have at least maybe moved it up here where it's a bit hard to get at somewhere like that. By the way, not being able to least get some until the grenades going off here. Guardian, Guards infantry taking some heavy losses. And there you go, 152 in the gun, how it's ready to fight at the fascists, the Hitlerites. Just need to shoot it. Black Pants are still doing not much there, so I mean, one ring has to question why did he then get it in the first place? If he's not going to be using it very much. I mean, don't get a unit like that not to then basically hold it back. And there you go, bit of a mistake, they moved up front of the Raketen Nerfus. In particular, one that managed to reach Veterans 4, which has, well, higher range amongst other things. And apparently still forgetting about that Schwerer Panzer force and his ability to really turn infantry into something less alive. And there we go though, firing the howitzer straight at the Schwerer Panzer quarters. Good idea though, although some of the runes that absorb some of the strikes there, some of the high explosive shells one came from the Not the Veteran 4 and that does get wiped out and in fact getting this very close to Veteran 1 already. And there we go. Things are looking grim for Mila. 
A lot of units doing nothing while the rest are getting slaughtered. And it's a little straight going down there. Oh, we can just hear the German artillery beginning to find there. Go, just one massive ballast going down. T-34 running through it. How to clear it out? Everything's exploding except the infantry. Quite the serious ballast. I mean, he saved a lot of ammunition, so there would be a lot of sort of ammunition shells up there. Good lord, that's quite impressive. The streets are well, also largely gone. So there we go. That's one way of getting your opponent's Howard, sir. One way. But again, he needs to actually also gain back the map here. He needs to get in some terrain. And more importantly, he needs to get some fuel. He's getting reasonably close maybe to calling the Panther and maybe turning this around. We are losing supplies to the enemy. Since Made Man keeps having his chief force wiped out. <laughs> Leaving unable to build up a larger force and he's not gotten any field guns. To prepare for a panther. They probably gonna have a bit of easier time now the one that the Cadmifers has been lost, in particular the bit 74 one. That really was quite the loss. Sandbags going up there, not bad, not bad. Using the T-34 to hit terrain, good, good. Everything seems to be basically happening here, but at the same time, it's not happening now. He's just making everything up here, but he's not doing anything from it, which is something you at least want to avoid. You want to be a bit active. What was done? Not doing much either. Our territory is falling into enemy hands. We got a quick four bullets there from the Jaeger infantry. Nice shot there from the lightest infantry the shots. Four forwards now. Noting by the way, he's not done anything to say south at T for fuel. fuel. Jaeger infantry need to get away, need to get away. Also, Fortress need to get into the building. You know, the building right next to it, where they could be a bit safer there from the tanks, high explosive fire. Flak pants are still amounting to bug roll, and there goes charging trams to them in front of the tanks, where we'll have an easier time with the machine guns and high explosive shields. Tank to kill them. Very poorly handled right there by Mila. Very poor infantry against armor tactics. And there you go, unit wiped out. Finally, they're also getting these oh, flat pans on the move, and apparently another artillery strike. More explosions, more things getting blown to bits. In this case, not as lot as munitions salvaged up, which basically um, determines how many shots that come in the barrage when you call it in. I mean, he had, I think, over 200 one to call in the first ones. So that really led to a massive barrage. Whereas this one really didn't have a lot of extra munitions, so not really much of an impressive barrage. Another strike from the Soviet Air Force. Flak Panther stopping up for this infantry. Stop moving, stop moving. You're more accurate when you're not moving. There we go. Stormic crashing down there. It's not killing anyone. As it does, coming down like a lot of scrap metal. And there you go. Panther finally arriving, but again, map control is rather terrible. He needs to somehow strike back his opponent. Trying to get some kills off for this flak pants one down thing. I mean, it's really not abounded too much in this fight. It's not like he can't do much, it's just apparently he seems reluctant to do anything with it. Which begs the question why did he get in the first place then? And there you go, Panzer Kampfang for arriving, he needs to make a move. And he needs to regain the territory over here as well. T-34 is blanking in, attacking here, the light infantry gun, good, good. Panther not responding to this threat to German personnel and equipment. Engage, engage. Postgres needs to reinforce. Panther opening up there. And it looks like he already lost another foot under this walk with a panther track. Again on their own, they're pretty much useless. Now we got the panther here engaging. He split them up, the T-34 probably now back now and the veteran too. It's engaged the panther from the rear. Good, good. Gaining veteran, clear much, how rate of fire. We do got the Kenmare from the T-34. He says escape, he needs to escape. 
He could, by the way, try and ramming one. Oh, and he lost eventually to T-34. I mean, Mate Man is not really good at getting his T-34s out of sticky situations. He has his lap tendon just sticking around instead of you know, trying to escape. And that essentially, for example, in this case, lost him eventually three T-34. That's going to hurt. So we do see another one has arrived. Lots of forces hanging about here doing nothing at all. Might want to be in the, you know, getting them out on the field. Standing by. Send orders. Strike back his opponent. Points are ticking down. Standing by. Force is still not making a move for the victory point here. Attention. Come on, Mila. Four vets. And a Malta abandoned again. But no one really dealing with it this time around in any way or manner. Less than 100 points, Conscious moving forward. And there you go, T-34 getting the Panther, Panther taking damage from a bit of the shots there, and the anti-tank grenades. Sadly, he did not get repair before he moved it out there after the engagement of the T-34, so it's already quite a bit of damage. Could get them into the building there, but no. Getting another puncher strike. And there you go, Jägen is retreating. Two points will make him move the point, but under five once more from the Schwerer Panzer quarters. And again, the map control here, displayed by me, like, is rather depressing. So not having much luck in actually controlling much territory for any longer period of time because he keeps running about there and he also tends to be very, very passive when it comes to things after the time. And even then he also splits up things, charging straight here into a line of uh, Russian defenders. And the force is about to get wiped out. Not looking good here for Mila Soldan. Cut for their closing in, by the way. Good about time. They should have been moving in closer there, but something single earlier. And they go hitting the dirt. And the flak after they wipes out his own men. Still not repair that one. Tisk, tisk. Apparently, Mila is, Mila is blaming the map. I'll sort of speed up then. And while I admit, I mean, it can be a bit daunting for anyone sort of playing on it in the first few times, and there you go, he actually gives up. Despite having a panther, despite having a flat panther some infantry, he actually ends up giving up. I mean, he actually had a chance of getting back into this. I mean, his opponents only were making some mistakes as well, but overall, I mean, the problem for Mila was, again, you know, the good old unit preservation, but in this case, rather also the more novel, not really using buildings at all to sort of really cover up his troops, which overall makes things a lot easier for his opponent. Running troops out in front of attack, for example, up close, not really good either. Lost him a lot of good infantry either. No salvaging, by the way, of the tanks either. No mines, for example, either. I mean, there are a lot of problems there, and he also slack tents. It was basically, you know, well, wasting troops for the overall. You know, he just couldn't really control the map very well. He kept running about there, and he kept the also being very passive. I mean, he had a flak panzer for 10 to 20 minutes, and for a lot of the part, he didn't do a lot there. I mean, in the end, he managed six kills. That's not really positive for a flak panzer, which is really meant to get a lot of kills. I mean, that was overall a waste of resources. So, I mean, there were a lot of problems there for Mila, which he really needs to work on. Again, part, you know, be more focused, but also, you know, know when to fight, and know when to you know, use bloody cover. But also, you know, more focus. For our main man, I mean, tanks got wasted quite a bit there. He had a tendency of getting out into sticky situations. They're not really getting out of there. Some problems with the unit preservation here and there as well. But not quite as bad as opponent. He actually made mines, but again, had a slight tendency of actually placing it right in front of his opponent for the opponent to watch, which is not really optimal either. But overall, he sort of displayed a decent sort of idea of how to control the map and take away his opponent's map control. That was good. He actually did some harassment, which is also... Good. So, I mean, it wasn't all bad, but, you know, it could also, I think, have been a bit better. And so, in the end, you know, the artillery right here, that close, the largest opponent to easily call in artillery on it as well. So, that could have been a bit better. But overall, good ability uses. You practically use pretty much every ability available to them. That was good. 
that's always great to see. So, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this match. I hope you learned something for this Monday Nobby fight. If you did want to subscribe to your friends, share it with everyone. If not, you know, send in a replay and provide some feedback in the comments. This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.